In this video, we will explore the anatomy of the nasal cavity. We will begin with an introduction, followed by a detailed description of the nasal cavity structure and divisions. Next, we will delve into its blood and nerve supply. Subsequently, we will discuss some clinical correlations. Finally, we will conclude with key takeaways. The nasal cavity, also referred to as the nasal fossa, is a vital component of the respiratory system, playing a crucial role in both breathing and the sense of smell known as olfaction. Anatomically positioned at the center of the face, it is located above the oral cavity, beneath the cranial cavity, and medial to the orbital cavities and the maxillary sinuses. This placement not only contributes to its respiratory functions but also influences facial structure and aesthetics. Extending from the front nostrils to the posterior nasal apertures, or coani, the nasal cavity serves as the primary airway for inhalation. At the back, it opens into the nasopharynx, linking the upper respiratory and digestive tracts. Its bilateral, air-filled structure is crucial for filtering, humidifying, and warming the air before it reaches the lungs. The cavity is anatomically triangular and divided into two separate chambers by the nasal septum, a thin sagittal partition. This division is crucial for maintaining balanced airflow and facilitating efficient nasal function. The septum, made of bone and cartilage, can sometimes be deviated, leading to common clinical conditions like nasal obstruction and breathing difficulties. Each chamber of the nasal cavity is lined with a mucous membrane, rich in blood vessels and nerves, which helps in trapping dust, pathogens, and foreign particles, thus protecting deeper structures of the respiratory tract. The mucous lining also contains olfactory receptors, essential for the sense of smell, which has significant implications for quality of life and overall well-being. The structure of each half of the nasal cavity is defined by four distinct walls, with two primary apertures facilitating its functions. The walls delineate the boundaries and provide the framework for the intricate anatomical features within. We will start our description by focusing on each wall, the superior wall or roof, it begins with the posterior surface of the nasal bones, which forms the foremost part of the roof. Adjacent to this is the nasal part of the frontal bone, prominently featuring the frontal nasal spine. This is followed by the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone, a critical structure that provides a passage for olfactory nerves from the nasal cavity to the brain. Completing the structure of the roof is the body of the sphenoid bone, which forms the rearmost part of the nasal cavity's superior wall. The inferior wall or the floor of the nasal cavity is mainly composed of two parts. The anterior two-thirds is formed by the palatine process of the maxilla. This portion is significant for its contribution to both the floor of the nasal cavity and the roof of the mouth. The remaining posterior one-third of the nasal cavity's floor is constituted by the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. This arrangement provides a sturdy base for the nasal cavity and demarcates the separation between the nasal and oral cavities. The medial wall, commonly known as the nasal septum, plays a pivotal role in nasal anatomy. It serves the critical function of dividing the nasal cavity into left and right halves, thus facilitating bilateral nasal function. Extending longitudinally from the nostrils at the front to the coani at the back, it forms a continuous partition that separates the two sides of the nasal cavity. A characteristic feature of the nasal septum is its frequent deviation from the exact midline. This deviation is a prevalent anatomical variation, often resulting in asymmetry between the two halves of the nasal cavity, with one side being larger than the other. This deviation can vary in degree and, in some cases, may impact nasal function or airflow. The structure of the nasal septum is composed of two distinct components, reflecting its composite nature of cartilage and bone. The anterior part of the septum is primarily made up of septal cartilage. This cartilaginous section provides both flexibility and support to the nose, making it less susceptible to fractures. The posterior portion of the septum is osseous, and is further subdivided into two segments for additional structural complexity. The posterosuperior segment is formed by the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. This part of the ethmoid bone contributes to the upper bony framework of the septum. The posterior-inferior segment is comprised of the vomer bone, which forms the lower part of the bony nasal septum. Together, these bony elements provide rigidity and stability to the nasal structure. Lastly, the lateral wall of the nasal cavity, an intricate and multifaceted structure, is composed of six distinct bones.
these bones collectively provide the framework and support for the critical functional components within the nasal cavity. The nasal surface of the maxilla, this bone forms a large portion of the anterior section of the lateral wall. The medial plate of the pterygoid process, a part of the sphenoid bone, it contributes to the posterior aspect of the lateral wall. The perpendicular plate of the palatine bone, this bone forms a significant part of the posterior section of the lateral wall, delineating the boundary between the nasal cavity and the nasopharynx. The labyrinth or lateral mass of the ethmoid, this complex structure is crucial for the formation of the superior and middle nasal conchi, turbinates, playing a key role in air filtration and conditioning. The lacrimal bone, located in the anterior portion, it houses the nasolacrimal duct, which is essential for tear drainage from the eyes into the nasal cavity. And the inferior concha, also known as the inferior turbinate, this independent bone is significant for its role in regulating airflow and conditioning within the lower part of the nasal cavity. In addition to these bones, the lateral wall is characterized by the presence of the nasal conchi also referred to as turbinates, and the corresponding nasal meat uses. The conchi are critical for increasing the surface area within the nasal cavity, thereby enhancing the warming, humidifying, and filtering of the inhaled air. Below each turbinate lies a corresponding meatus which serves as pathways for air and facilitates drainage from the paranasal sinuses and the eustachian tubes. The nasal conchi, also known as turbinates, crucial structures within the nasal cavity, playing vital roles in air filtration, humidification, and temperature regulation. They consist of the inferior, middle, and superior conchi, each with distinct characteristics. The inferior nasal conchi consists of a lamina of spongy bone that is curled upon itself like a scroll. These conchi are considered a pair of facial bones as they articulate with the maxillae bones and project horizontally into the nasal cavity. The middle concha is shorter than the inferior concha. Unlike the inferior concha, these are not separate bones but are part of the ethmoid bone. The surface of the middle concha is rough and marked by numerous grooves that run vertically downward from the cribriform plate. These grooves house branches of the olfactory nerves, which distribute to the mucous membrane covering the superior nasal concha. Positioned above the middle concha, the superior conchi are smaller and less prominent. They are a part of the labyrinth of the ethmoid bone, arising as bony projections from its posterior surface. Each of these conchi contributes significantly to the nasal cavity's function. The inferior conchi primarily assist in regulating the airflow and filtering the inhaled air. The middle and superior conchi, being part of the ethmoid bone, are closely associated with the olfactory system and aid in directing airflow to the olfactory receptors. The nasal meat uses, positioned beneath each corresponding nasal concha, are essential air passages in the nasal cavity, each serving specific drainage functions. The inferior meatus, often referred to as the lacrimal meatus, the inferior meatus is an air passage located between the inferior nasal concha and the lateral nasal wall. This meatus is particularly important as it represents the drainage point for the nasolacrimal duct, through which tears from the eyes are channeled into the nasal cavity. The middle meatus, situated between the middle nasal concha and the lateral nasal wall. It is responsible for the drainage of the anterior ethmoid air cells, the maxillary sinuses, and the frontal sinuses. Lastly, the superior meatus, the smallest among the three, is located between the superior nasal concha and the lateral nasal wall. It serves as the drainage point for the posterior ethmoid air cells and the sphenoid sinuses. The boundaries of the superior meatus are defined medially by the lateral surface of the superior concha and laterally by the medial surface of the ethmoid bone. Each of these meat uses contributes significantly to the nasal cavity's functionality. The nasal cavity is characterized by two primary sets of apertures, the anterior nasal aperture, commonly known as the external nares, and the posterior nasal aperture, known as the coani, each serving distinct functions. The anterior nasal aperture, known as the external nares. These are the two visible openings at the front of the face, forming the entrance to the nose. The structure of each naris is framed by a specific arrangement of bones, superiorly, it is formed by the free lower border of the nasal bones, which provide the upper framework. Inferiorly and laterally, the anterior border of the maxillary bones defines the lower and side boundaries. This configuration allows for the passage of air into the nasal cavity and plays a key role in the process of breathing and olfaction. On the other hand, the posterior nasal aperture, 
commonly referred to as coani, are crucial openings located at the back of the nasal cavity, marking the transition between the nasal cavity and the nasopharynx. They are bounded by several anatomical structures, superiorly, the boundary is formed by the body of the sphenoid bone. Inferiorly, it is demarcated by the posterior border of the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. Medially, the posterior border of the vomer forms part of the boundary. And laterally, the posterior border of the medial pterygoid plate completes the framing. These apertures are essential for the continuous flow of air from the nasal cavity to the respiratory tract. Both the anterior and posterior nasal apertures are integral to the nasal cavity's functionality. The anterior apertures facilitate the initial stages of respiration and olfaction, while the posterior apertures ensure a smooth transition of air into the lower parts of the respiratory tract. The nasal cavity, which extends from the vestibule of the nose to the nasopharynx, is anatomically divided into three distinct regions, each with unique features and functions. The vestibule is the area surrounding the anterior opening to the nasal cavity, functioning as the initial segment of the nasal passage. It is characterized by the presence of nasal hairs, vibrissae, and a skin-like lining. The vibrissae are crucial for filtering larger particles like dust and debris from the air entering the nasal cavity, serving as the first line of defense in the respiratory system. The respiratory region, including the floor and the inferior and middle conchi, this region forms the major part of the nasal cavity. It is lined by a specialized type of tissue known as ciliate pseudostratified epithelium, commonly referred to as respiratory epithelium. This lining plays a key role in filtering, humidifying, and warming the inhaled air, thanks to its cilia and mucus secreting goblet cells. Lastly, the olfactory region, located above the free edge of the superior turbinate, this region is specialized for the sense of smell. It is lined with olfactory cells that are equipped with olfactory receptors. These receptors are sensitive to odor molecules, making this area essential for detecting a wide range of scents. In terms of transition between these regions, the transition from the vestibular mucosa to the respiratory mucosa is gradual, indicating a seamless change in the type of epithelium from skin-like to respiratory. However, the transition from the respiratory mucosa to the olfactory mucosa is abrupt, signifying a distinct change in the function and cellular composition of the lining from air conditioning and filtration to olfaction. The nasal cavity's arterial supply is both extensive and intricate, drawing blood flow from branches of both the internal and external carotid arteries. This comprehensive vascular network is essential for the nasal cavity's functions and is a key factor in certain medical conditions like epistaxis. From the external carotid artery, the maxillary artery emerges as a major contributor, providing branches such as the sphena palatine and greater palatine arteries. Additionally, the external carotid artery gives rise to the superior labial and lateral nasal arteries, which predominantly supply the vestibule and respiratory portions of the nasal cavity. The internal carotid artery's contribution comes via the ophthalmic artery, which branches off into the anterior and posterior ethmoidal arteries. These arteries are responsible for vascularizing the roof of the nasal cavity, encompassing the superior part of the nasal septum and the lateral nasal wall. Two notable anastomotic areas within this arterial system are key sites for epistaxis. Kieselbacher's plexus, also known as the Littles area, located in the antero-inferior part of the nasal septum, is an arterial network formed by the anastomosis of the anterior ethmoidal, greater palatine, sphena palatine, and superior labial arteries. This plexus is a common site for anterior nosebleeds due to its location and dense vascularization. Woodruff's area, located in the posterior part of the inferior lateral nasal wall, just behind the inferior turbinate, involves the anastomosis of the sphena palatine and pharyngeal arteries. This area is particularly relevant in cases of posterior epistaxis. The venous and lymphatic drainage systems of the nasal cavity are complex networks that play crucial roles in maintaining the physiological balance of this region. Within the nasal cavity, the venous drainage mirrors the arterial supply, forming a comprehensive submucosal venous network. This network is organized into three primary drainage pathways. Firstly, the superior drainage pathway involves veins draining towards the ophthalmic vein, an important route for the superior part of the nasal cavity. Secondly, the posterior drainage pathway, where veins drain into the maxillary vein, caters to the venous return from the deeper parts of the nasal cavity.
Lastly, the anteroinferior drainage pathway involves veins draining towards the facial vein, addressing the lower and anterior regions of the nasal cavity. These venous pathways converge into the pterygoid venous plexus, a significant structure for the overall venous return from the nasal cavity. The lymphatic drainage of the nasal cavity exhibits a similar complexity. Lymph from the anterior part of the nasal cavity, particularly the vestibule area, primarily drains into the submandibular lymph nodes, located beneath the jaw. In contrast, lymph from the posterior and superior parts of the nasal cavity typically drains into the retropharyngeal lymph nodes, situated behind the pharynx. Additionally, the superior part of the nasal cavity also contributes to the drainage into the deep cervical lymph nodes. The sensory innervation of the nasal cavity is primarily facilitated by branches of the trigeminal nerve, which play a crucial role in conveying sensory information, including pain, temperature, and touch sensations, from the nasal mucosa. The ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve gives rise to the anterior ethmoidal nerve, which supplies the anterosuperior part of the nasal cavity. This nerve supplies sensation to the upper regions, including the superior turbinate and the adjacent septal area. Another important branch from the ophthalmic division is the nasociliary nerve. It further contributes to the sensory innervation of the nasal cavity, particularly in the areas surrounding the upper nasal septum and the lateral nasal wall. The infraorbital nerve, stemming from the maxillary division, extends its branches to the posterior and inferior parts of the nasal cavity. This distribution ensures the conveyance of sensory inputs from the lower regions of the nasal cavity, including the inferior turbinate and the lower part of the nasal septum. In contrast to the trigeminal nerve, the olfactory nerve specifically innervates the roof of the nasal cavity, particularly the superior nasal concha and the opposing area of the nasal septum. The olfactory nerve is distinct in its function, being primarily responsible for the sense of smell. It detects odorant molecules, enabling the perception of various odors. This specialized sensory function is crucial for a range of activities from enjoying food flavors to detecting hazardous environments. Clinical correlations of the nasal cavity are integral to understanding various pathologies and planning appropriate medical interventions. The primary imaging modalities used for diagnostic purposes include computed tomography scans and magnetic resonance imaging. Computed tomography scans are pivotal in the etiological and topographical diagnosis of chronic sinusitis. They provide detailed images of the nasal cavity and sinuses, allowing for an accurate assessment of the extent and nature of sinus involvement. This is crucial in chronic cases where inflammation, blockage, or structural anomalies are suspected. The scans offer high-resolution images that help in identifying anatomical variations and obstructions in the sinus drainage pathways, which are common contributors to chronic sinusitis. In cases of nasal or paranasal tumors, magnetic resonance imaging is often employed as a complementary tool to computed tomography scans. Magnetic resonance imaging is particularly beneficial for assessing the extent of tumor invasion into surrounding structures due to its superior soft tissue contrast. It helps in determining the involvement of critical areas such as the orbit, cranial base, and intracranial compartments, which is vital for surgical planning and prognosis. The lateral wall of the nasal cavity holds substantial importance in rhinology. This area is where the primary paranasal sinuses open. These include the maxillary, frontal, ethmoid, and sphenoid sinuses. Understanding the anatomy and pathology of the lateral nasal wall is crucial, as any abnormalities or blockages here can affect sinus drainage and lead to conditions like sinusitis. In conclusion, the nasal cavities play a crucial role in the human respiratory system, characterized by their complex anatomical structure and vital functions. Each nasal cavity, separated by the nasal septum, comprises four distinct walls, the roof, floor, medial, and lateral walls, along with two primary openings, the anterior and posterior nasal apertures. The lateral wall is especially significant due to the presence of the nasal conchi. These conchi are instrumental in increasing the surface area for more efficient air filtration and humidification, enhancing the air's quality before it reaches the lungs. Functionally, the nasal cavities are essential in warming, humidifying, and filtering inhaled air, contributing to respiratory health and protecting against environmental irritants. The olfactory region, located in the superior part of the nasal cavity, is critical for the sense of smell, an important aspect of sensory perception and quality of life.
Clinically, the nasal cavities are susceptible to various conditions such as sinusitis, epistaxis, and allergies. These conditions highlight the importance of understanding nasal cavity anatomy and physiology for effective diagnosis and treatment. Imaging modalities like CT scans and MRI play pivotal roles in diagnosing these conditions, offering detailed insights into the nasal cavity structure and any pathological changes.